Brothers, welcome back to Dummy Nation. Today, we're going to be playing as the most upvoted nation in the last video, which is Mongolia. Now, Mongolia starts off in a little bit of a tough situation, sandwiched between two of the th three great superpowers of Russia and China. Just taking a look at what the uh, alliance tree would cost with you. 128, I think we can get that cheaper once we invest in our military. So let's make that the first thing we do. Oh, and just starting off with Mongolia, which is kind of show what we're starting with. Not a very strong military, only 1.4 million firepower. With 125th best GDP, 103rd best military power, we can definitely increase that by getting some tanks first. So let's get about 2.5. Call that good. And then let's invest in some uh, commandos and then some gunners and then throw the rest into rockets. Now let's also take a look at our budget. We're gonna bring down social spending ever so slightly, bring up R&D, bring up military, and then bring down liquidity. That gets to about 2.39 growth, which is good enough. And then we're gonna take our, mil our research we're going to bypass military research, which makes everything cheaper because we're not going to invest that much into the military. We're just going to put five points into combat training, put the rest into reactive armor with the idea being that we're going to finish off combat training and then immediately go into economic research. So with that being said, let's take a look and we'll see if this uh, price goes down when we get our military. All right. So the price is now 13. We'll go ahead and buy that. It's a lot cheaper than it was at 100. But once we have our military, they were more likely to become alliance uh, allied to us. Let's also take Liberator, throw that all the way up. I'm going to keep military service pretty low, but still kind of consistent because China's still going to be a threat to us. We can't buy an alliance with China. They're too expensive. They're going to want half a million dollars and we're only making 2.9 a tick. So it is going to be a little bit of a waiting game. And ultimately, we have two countries that can fall. Russia or China. China will be the harder one to take down. Russia still will be hard, but Russia's diplomatic um, or political freedoms, 149 which is less or which is half of what ours is. So we have a good chance of getting in there and not facing too many rebels where China's is also pretty weak. So there's still a chance that we could fight them. But it's going to be a big territory battle to watch China fall. We have done a playthrough with China falling, but they just have so many rebels that spawn that we really need Liberator all the way up in order to be able to take down China. Okay, both countries are getting really weak. It's just about who do we want to wait for. And I think Russia is going to be the one that goes down because they're fighting a pretty heavy war in the Middle East where China's still able to recover a lot of their troops just because of the money they're making. United Kingdom is fighting Russia so we'll wait for them to lose all their troops and we'll, I think we go in on Russia. Now we're not going to be able to get access to a lot of their economic zones but what we can get is sea access. So let's take a look at the realistic targets we can get from Russia. We can get over here which is a good economic zone and then either push up north for sea or push over into the east. So we're going to try and capture this because this is where the most economy is that we can grab. So let's go ahead and start pushing over there. And then what is our military at? It's at four, it's a good percent. Let's go ahead and just release. We'll split this army in two because I really don't anticipate running into too many Russian armies. Let's get a bigger push here. So we actually have a good access to potentially get a lot of the land over here. So I'm splitting the army, one going over to capture these economic zones and then one really pushing in over here. And I actually think right now Spain's getting over here. I think we will have, I don't know, Spain's really pushing. I don't know if we're going to have access to the outside. We can go through Kazakhstan, though, so I'm just going to push for all the economic zones over here really aggressively. And the way I do this is by using these two armies to kind of slingshot each other. So that one's always attacking the front lines, and we can always directionally push very aggressively to where we want to go. We're racing Spain for a lot of this land, so it's important for us to constantly be on this action so that we are always pushing the front lines as aggressively as possible. Now, there's still a chance we can get Moscow, which is what we are, which is the prize gem of Russia. It is going to be a little bit difficult because Spain is basically right there. Finland is also pretty close. There's still a chance, though. So just again, constantly slingshotting our way over. And there we go. We got Moscow. That's very exciting for us. Let's push down south to capture this last little economic region. Do we get it? No, Turkey got it. Okay. Um, is there still a reason, way for us to push out? No, there's not. So we did kind of sacrifice ourselves in that front. We can still get a little bit more land, but we have access to Kazakhstan and through the stands, we can kind of get out. Now we're making about 134 a tick. Our military is pretty weak, but our GDP is now in the top 20. Military is the 20th. So eventually we'll be doing a lot better. Give me one of these armies and split a little bit more. Just keep slingshotting. But we're a lot more respectable in, on the national stage now. Now at this point, I'm very concerned with our diplomacy. We are only friends with Turkey. Actually, I don't even know if we're friends with Turkey anymore. We're not friends with Turkey. So we need a friend. United States. We're a democracy. You're a democracy. I don't suppose. 7.5. China? 
6,000. We'll get an alliance with China. That's really the only neighbor I was concerned with. So getting an alliance with them is very good for us. They're also a great economic partner because they're a large economy and they border us. So that's going to be very nice for us. Let's go ahead and keep pushing for this land over here. Because I believe, yeah, there's still some economic zones worth grabbing. And we'll just keep pushing for the remainder of what remains of Russia and the territories that we can grab. Still landlocked, but have an opportunity to get out. Kazakhstan is going to be our, the next target we have to go through. But they have currently uh, a 4.66 military power, where ours is... 6.53 so it is worth it for us to go into them eventually but right now not so much ukraine would also be a pretty good target as they don't quite have the allies that um like turkey does or something like that let's go ahead and throw another point into uh combat training we're going to keep working down this until we can get it up but after this we're going to go heavy into uh the economy research our research is at a pretty high level so i'm kind of hoping that will carry us through we have a lot of growth right now so we're 17th best gdp we've already climbed a little bit we're all the way down there at the bottom. We're right behind Mexico, but Mexico is growing faster than us. So the chances of us catching, catching them is pretty low. But when we get all this land, we might be a little bit closer. Long Mongolia now exists. Now, our next target is going to be Kazakhstan. We can attack them for a while, but we need to keep an eye on their economic zones. So let's get our armies just to be positioned like right here, just in case somebody else decides to attack. In fact, let's put you down here just so we can separate and really push for these areas. Oh, this is really bad. Our kind of way out was going through Iran and that's no longer possible. So now we kind of have, to, we're kind of having to go against Japan, China, or Spain. Spain, we could potentially push out through, just gab a little bit of sea access. That might be the easiest way, but that's a long ways off. Military is very weak still. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit. Hey, we jumped up. Did we, did we pass Mexico? Mexico fell a lot. They must be getting attacked. Yeah, they're getting attacked by Japan. Okay. No, I won't tell. Oh, Kazakhstan's falling. Pause, pause, pause. Okay, give me here. Give me here. Give me as many tanks as we can get. 860, good enough. Bring you over here. Try and fight for the land that we're fighting Turkey for. There we go. Kazakhstan's been defeated. Kyrgyzstan has a military. Uzbekistan does not. And we have a little bit of borders on Uzbekistan. So let's see if we can get down there with both troops and see if we can win this little bit of territory. Good, we get just a little bit. Probably wasn't the best economic zones. Yeah, we really didn't get the economic zones we would have wanted. Turkey got a lot of that. We were just a little bit asleep at the wheel. But we'll wait to see what uh, China does at this point. As we are still just building up, making about 300, so a respectable amount, but not quite the amount we want. We can put another five points into combat training. And as soon as that's done, we'll be able to start going down economics. Mm, South Korea and China are falling. China's kind of falling off. Not in a position that we can really take them out, unless another nation does. But we're very much primed to go into the capital of Beijing if they do fall. Okay, China has officially fallen. Let's get as many uh, commandos out as we possibly can. Is this all their military? 1.5 million, we push through that. Let's go straight into China. We're going to keep our army as one. I think this will be almost their, yeah, their military split. So this is a good chunk of it, but it's only tanks. We have a lot of rockets, so we should be able to do a pretty good amount of damage to them. And then we can start really pushing into China. Okay, they have 600 tanks left. I'm going to risk it a little bit and just try and slingshot our way down to the valuable coast. Now, China, tell me about your political freedom. Yours is 90th, so we're not going to get the bonus of Liberator, which is going to be rough for us. But we can still do a good chunk of grabbing land, even though we're going to have to fight rebels the entire time. Yeah, this is exactly what we wanted. We're going to be able to capture a lot of the coast, and somehow we've been able to defeat most of our enemies. And, oh, you still have a pretty big army rolling around. That's a lot of foot soldiers. I'm actually going to bring this army over to try and help squash their legitimate army as it runs away from us, as it should. Brazil's also here. They're helping us kind of fight down the rebels, and we've mostly blocked them from entering the country. So I'm actually going to bring you down a little bit to try and keep blocking their way in. As soon as we finish up over here, we'll be able to bring the second army over as well. And they'll be able to help kind of block Brazil from grabbing any more territory. Yeah, they've already walked away. Good. Yeah, I'm basically, I'm just trying to secure this region. I don't really care about the West too much. We're able to get that in time. But for us to prioritize our economy, we're growing at 1.97 a tick, which puts us as the second best GDP because we also got a little bit of Russia. Let's bring you down here and just eliminate these rebels real quick. We got a little bit more uh, commandos to kind of throw around and there they go. And um, can you also capture a little bit? Let's get some more gunners out there as well. And that can just kind of be an infantry unit that captures a little bit of territory as well. 
Yeah, China keeps putting out these big commando armies, which is really hurting our, our army, but we're, we're doing fine. I mean, 18th best military power is concerning, but we will be able to build that back up in time. So for right now, I'm just going to combine our army into one, try and stop taking such massive losses. We have most of the areas that we want. We just need to keep pushing for it, like where they put their capital, because that's kind of an indicator of where their economy is. In fact, what about an alliance treaty with you? Pretty expensive. Is there any big powers we could get an alliance with? India. That's a good one. And then what about the United States? Three million. It's cheaper. Let's take a look at the economic powers. Germany. No. UK? No. France? No. Spain? No. Turkey, we lost our alliance. You're, okay, well, at least we got one with India. Nobody likes Mongolia. Crazy how that works. How about Japan? Yeah, closer. We could potentially get one with Japan because our military is at eighth. But when you start comparing us against like United States, 3,000? Oh, wait, we're a lot closer than I thought. How much do we have total? 11 million firepower, though. They have 30. So we're, we're a little bit far off. It's still early game, which means tanks are pretty cheap still. So let's just invest heavily into the tank economy. Try and keep getting up to about a thousand and we'll order. Or we'll, let's just save up until we get to about five million and make a big order. But China's fallen for the most part. We just have these little bit of non-sequential lands to get. And then India would also be a potentially good target. Even though they have a lot of commandos and stuff. It is our only ally. So is Turkey. Wow, Turkey's so weak. Look at that. It'd be a great target to get if we could afford to buy everybody off. Uh, United States, I really still want an alliance with you. Nine million. Uh, uh, Germany? <laughs> Dude, the Europeans are so stingy with their alliances. Japan. J we can get an alliance with Japan. That's very worthwhile. Okay. That is the end of China in the year 2053. Editor Corky, please put it on the screen when we started that war. <laughs> but hey, we got sea access now. We can start going into the weak boys that we want to, although most of them are already kind of gone. Uh, I was going to go into Saudi Arabia, but they've been, they've been spoken for. We could go into India. Everyone knows my reservations about that. Especially as, you know, we're eighth strongest military. I think it might be worth just investing in the military a little bit more and then maybe a war with India, maybe a war with South Korea. Japan is now our ally, so we don't want to mess with them. That's the really only ally we have in the world. We're also allied to India, which is, you know, speaks of how much I think of our allies. But Japan is definitely one that I want to keep around for a long time, just because they're right next to us, they're strong power, and they're the only ones that really want to be friends with us. Now we have about 5 million. Let's go ahead and get 4,000 more tanks out there. That'll really jump up our military score. We get about 7,000. I want to get to about 15K tanks, about 7,000 rockets, and then these this up to a million, this up to half a million. We'll see how that works. Okay, 10 million gives us 6,000 more tanks. That's a good amount. And I want to get about 2,000 more. Mm, Japan's attacking in India right now. Let's get these tanks and then maybe some more commandos. And I think we go to war with India too. Let's bring you down. I want to get over here. We'll walk through India's land. Hopefully they don't mind. So that if Japan gets real serious about attacking India, we can also be right there. Yeah, Japan is getting real serious about attacking India. Um, their economic zones are all like right here. Honestly, if we push, well, we can't push from there. That's not us. Oh, 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 oh. Let's push right here. Yeah, cheap alliance with Vietnam. And then who is this? Australia? Another cheap alliance. Okay, totally worth that. All right, we managed to slingshot, kind of block our way through India. So Japan's going to have a tough time going around. So what I'm going to do now is take this army, push down here, and see if we can get to this gap to block off Japan from grabbing any more. While we're also investing pretty heavily into the rest of commandos, try and pump up those numbers. And then we also have 10 points. So let's go ahead and cheapen up economic research from here on out to 18%. And then we'll start working down. I think we want to start working down smart taxation first, which is at 4.1. So that'll be really nice for us. And brother, can you get down here too? Let's not worry too much about this. Let's just keep Japan away from the most of the India's economic zones. Who is over here? Is that Denmark? No, it's Norway. Dang it. Right when I thought we had everything secured. We're done with India. Now we just hang out. Second strongest military or GDP strongest military power. That really shocks me a lot. We are 37 million. Wow. What's Japan? 
Japan's a little bit weaker than us. Unite! Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Give me these these rockets we desperately need, and I think we just we cruise over to the United States. We only have like okay, you only have like 200 rockets. Give me over here. Um, give me as many commandos as I possibly can get. I'll get us up to a million. And I think we go to war with the United States. Their friends are pretty heavy, so we do want to save up a little bit before we engage with them. But the United States has never been weaker, and it probably never will be weaker. So getting their economic zones is going to be very valuable for us. They are also in first place. They're at 67%. Wow, we could really slingshot our way to victory here very fast. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. When we take out the United States, that'll put us about 80%. That'll put us leagues above everybody else. I think people are going to be really hard to um, convince not to attack us because they already really don't like us. Like Germany, how much would it cost for an alliance with you? Is nope, not, not to declare war, thank God. Still 60 million. 60 million right now. Okay, they got 4,000 rockets. We have 2 million to buy off potential enemies. I think we just go into this. All right, so we're halfway through the United States. We're about 60%, so we've kind of switched places with them. We're doing pretty well. A few countries have declared war on us. We need to be a little bit more uh, on the rebel watch with at least one of these armies. So I think we'll just have this guy as a dedicated army. We got a little bit more military building up back here. In fact, let's just bring these guys forward and we'll combine them with somebody. Probably this rebel army. The rebel hunting army. And let's just keep moving down and stopping these guys from spawning new armies. We're almost on the east coast. Nobody else is here, which is very good for us. We're only fighting Estonia and Slovakia at this point. So all, not, all things considered, not that bad. Let's bring you over. You just go right there. and Just stand there for a little bit. And we'll just try and slow these guys down. I would really love to not fight Slovakia, but even though they don't have a lot of troops, but it's a grand. A G. They are not going to be anybody easy to take to buy off, which is, you know, respectable, but at the same time, frustrating. As we are almost done with the United States' mainland territory. They still have a bunch of overseas holdings, which is going to be really good for us. But they're still strong enough to be able to buy a pretty good military. They're still the second strongest uh, GDP, even though they don't have most of their own country remaining. Here, you go like right here. We'll combine you two. And then you just go right, right there. Oh, Poland's also over here? Hold on. Or is that Indonesia? No, it's Poland. They want a G. We'll have to fight them down too. We're not going to be able to get that one down. Now, fortunately, we have three of our military stacked, so Poland's army, while de being very detrimental to us, is not going to be a, a real game killer for us. Let's just bring this fourth army over here as well. Just keep fighting them, everybody down. We almost have the East Coast. We really do need New York, though. We've captured all of Florida, so very valuable land. I love you capturing Key West. Thank you so much. But when you're done with that, can you go up north? Yeah, that's ours. Go here. Sometimes they get stuck on little islands. But with the U.S. landmass captured, we're making 29 a tick. So it's going to be really easy for us to bring back what we've lost, but we have lost a lot. We're down to 8,000 tanks. Military power, we're still number one. Uh, at GDP, we're number one, but we're going to have a lot more enemies as we're out 70%. So I'm a little bit cautious about actually eliminating the United States at this point, despite how crazy that sounds, just because I know we're not ready to fight the rest of the world. We're very much slowed down. I think I'll get Alaska. Oh, Brazil's over here. Hold on. Can I buy you off? No, you don't want see we're at this point awkward point now where the rest of the world really hates us they're not going to peace out with us because we have 72 percent we're pretty close to winning but we don't have the military to push for the victory okay let's actually move our troops over here and the reason we're going to do that is because there's more economic regions over in this in the parts of in india they have so i definitely want to do that germany you sure you don't want to be friends no people don't want to be friends with me i don't know what to do japan are we still friends good at least we're still friends with japan Okay, let's start going into these nice little economic zones of India that the United States holds. Really start to pressure them down. They hold a lot of the world still. So a lot of Africa holdings, a lot of Middle East holdings. So I, what I'm most fearful of is we're, we're, we have to keep knocking them down because they're still, I think, the str second strongest GDP. Yeah. So giving these, times, giving these guys time to build up is going to be really bad for us. So we just got to really invest heavily in our military and hope that we can kind of power our way through, but not get to the point where we are such a threat that everybody goes to war with us because we're just not strong enough to be able to stand it. Let's get also a couple levels of smart taxation in there. Just kind of help our GDP as much as we possibly can. Actually, I think we just continue onwards. It's a little bit scary to do this because, again, we just don't have the military. We have a lot of tanks. We need more rockets out there to fight their tanks because they're starting to build those back up again. Okay, South Korea is invading us. 
Let's knock down these rebels, and then I think we get over there. Oh, we also need to get up our military service up very high. That's something we've been forgetting about. We're at, it, it, everything's just happened so fast in this game. It's been kind of hard to slow play it. Usually at this point in the game, we're like hard stuck in like fourth place. But with China and the United States both falling, obviously we're number one. A lot of people are going to be going after us, and we just need to be able to counter that. It's going to be very challenging to win this game just because the rest of the world's going to turn on us. And even though we're number one, we're not number one by like a dominant factor. Like Japan eight has more tanks than us. Germany's pretty weak. France is decently strong, decently strong. Poland, decently strong. But South Korea is going to be one that we need to kind of worry about. Okay, we finally started to make the turn on South Korea. This is the last little bit of their territory. So let's go ahead and split, try this, get this done a little bit faster. As Indonesia keeps charging into us, which is kind of why I've been fearful of splitting. Brazil also keeps coming over here as well. So <laughs> this is going to be real scary. I really don't want to fight down the rest of the United States. I feel like they're not going to let us get away with it. Yeah, 21G. Uh, and, you know, their can of worms. NATO's still very strong. You can see Brazil coming over here with a lot of force. They will not leave us alone. So we're in a bit of a pickle for sure. Like, I've been investing so heavily in our military, and we're weaker than when we started. <laughs> we only have 13k tanks, less than a million commandos. It's not looking great for us. That should be the end of South Korea, right? No, they still probably have an island somewhere. Ah, oh, freaking jerks. The ho whole world hating you is pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like the next big push we do, we'll just have everybody turn on us. We'll be kind of that watershed moment. Finland's declared one us. Ah, oh, frick. Okay, give me as many... How much what do you have what's your military composition finland not a lot okay i think we can just take it with this army but i'm afraid it's going to bring over the rest of europe so let's invest heavily in rockets get that number up just kind of slow down their advance we're really not looking to engage finland right now but i just want to stop them from attacking us yeah because here come the nato bees all right we run away while the rest of the world is hating you is scary that's actually a time fascism has no downsides if they're already hating you hating you won't change anything any worse I think you might be right. I think we go full fascist right here. We go full fascist. Apply. We we'll wait for these to get up to 100% and then we'll start recruiting heavily. Corey, what did we learn about walking through Japan? Japan's fine. We're at, oh, they don't like us anymore. Yeah, the, this is my, this is going to be the end. One way or another, this is the end. We just build up. We build up everything. We get to about 25k tanks, 15k rockets, 5 million one two million and i think we'll be fine germany's going to keep invading us down here i'm honestly going to sacrifice that land it's not the most valuable land in india and i don't want to anger the rest of the world right now i want to be as peaceful as i possibly can even though we're fascist we can also finish up smart taxation we really need to go start going down self-sufficient economy as well that's gonna be our next priority honestly though i don't i think we switch r d we put up military spending just because at this point we're going to have to be military boys. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're still growing at 3.17. I think that's still a good amount. But investing in the military is definitely something we're, we're putting a strong focus on, especially as we're fascists at this point. So I don't really see another way around it. How far up is Italy? Italy, I don't think is very valuable. The seventh. They're not very valuable. If anything, Brazil would probably be a good target. They just have commandos. But I think finishing up the United States would be probably the best move for us. Because right now, we can't go into the rest of the world without walking through Japan or the United States. Japan's eventually going to hate us for that. Here, give me this land bridge. Even though it's mountainous, I'd much prefer to walk through it than keep walking through Japan. Another point, self-sufficient economy. That's going to be very <laughs> crucial to us. Yeah, here comes a few more people to fight us. We knew that was what was at stake. Okay, look at this train of people coming to fight us. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so scary. I'm so scared. Here's Chile. We're not we're, fascism, as we've learned from the comments. Sonic, who's in the chat again? Thank you again, sir. If we if we get an alliance, it's going to immediately expire because fascism is it do be like that sometimes. So we just got to keep pushing and hoping for the best. Okay, we've eliminated the United States Army. That's a big relief. We still have to deal with a lot of their allies, which is acceptable at this point. We we're built to do that. So we just got to keep slowly pushing through, keeping our army in one just so we can fight down every country that comes at us. So we're just going to, I think we just keep peck, pecking away at them, hitting them for a little bit, 
taking out a few of the allies and then retreating to try and keep our um, military power up. We're only at 100 million or 92 million. Normally at this point, I'm at like 400 million or something like that. Or like this is 270. Normally we're like 400. So it's a little bit risky here. Very scary situation for sure. I do not like it in the slightest. Are we playing Mongolia or Spain without the S? <laughs> Very much Spain without the S. It's just, oh, this is a really painful in game. It's, it's us against the world at this point, and we're having to make progress while also not losing out on too much troops. We don't have the military or the spending to, to refurbish everybody as quickly as we would like. It's it, This is real pain. This is real pain for sure. You know what? Let's cut off one of the people that's been attacking us a lot at the source and just take out Taiwan. I don't even care who their friends are anymore as long as it's not Japan. It is Japan. Whatever. 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 Be a democracy. We can't democracy our, our way out of this. Everybody already hated us to begin with. They were never going to peace out with us. I know we're losing economic prowess, but we're gaining land. And eventually we're just going to fight our way out of this one. There, we got them out of here. Let's go back to the United States. Is there anybody strong in Europe? I'm honestly thinking about just going full into Europe. So we're fighting these guys down, but we're fighting for honestly land that doesn't matter. Like, we could get a lot more valuable land by just heavily attacking Brazil. Like, granted, the United States is still third in economy. But Brazil would probably be easier to grab. I'm going to Brazil. Let's get out there, everybody, and let's go to Brazil. Is Brazil weak? Brazil's incredibly weak. They have some allies, but it doesn't matter. Their defensive power is 69. United States is 255, just because they have more allies. I'm just tired of fighting down these huge armies for really nothing land you know at least this way i feel like i'm building up a military and the united states is not getting the opportunity to really build up because we're they're constantly sending their armies over to, to, to defend brazil like how much military do you have like my gosh you're just sending over rockets which is fine they have no defensive power so we're just crushing them every single time there we go okay um let's deal with us this uh, little australian army real quick there we go. Rockets, big order, 9,000. We'll wait for that, and then we'll go into... Is that the end of Brazil, by the way? Yeah, Brazil's been defeated. Okay, let's wait for this big order of rockets, and then we're going to go into France. Let's see, France's defensive power is 324. Yours is 437. Yeah, so basically fighting down everybody. All right, biggest army we can have, 467. This is an endgame army. We're going to go fight France because they have the, the strongest uh, economy other than like United States, Japan and Germany. But once we fight down France, we'll be able to roll through the rest of Europe and that will take care of a lot of our problems. The fascist Neo-Mongol Empire has recently inv naval invaded France heading to Paris. Yeah, didn't we invade in Normandy or is Normandy down here a little bit more? Well, Normandy's like right here. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do next is is france defeated no i think they still have this what else do they have they have some overseas territories too i kind of want to mow through italy and turkey just for the reason that i want to be able to reinforce from here and not have to walk through japan let's just go ahead let that finish up we'll grab this area and then honestly let's mow through italy and i would like to just wipe italy because they're gonna be a lot easier they don't have any africa holdings they don't have any asia holdings they just have everything in europe it's very con con Find and it'll be worth getting rid of somebody completely. So that's going to be the plan there. We're also building a few more rockets. And then when this is done, we're going to have a good amount that probably buy a little bit more tanks. How's our military looking? Tanks is actually fine, but we can always increase it. All right. Italy defeated. Yes, they are. OK, great. Let's start working our way through Turkey. There we go. All right. Turkey's been defeated. Now we can start more easily reinforcing our fights over here. Let's grab everybody. Bring them on over and uh, get ready probably to just finish off Finland really quickly and then start marching our way over. Let's split. You guys go fight Finland. You guys go fight Ukraine. We'll knock out these two really quickly. Poland doesn't have any troops. They're pretty self-contained. Let's fight them down too. All right, that's the end of Poland. Nice. Okay, so we've got choices. Japan's still pretty strong. Germany's been my arch nemesis for a long time. The United Kingdom would be... They've got a lot of overseas. The problem is, is I don't want to get wrapped up in fighting a lot, lot of people who have a lot of overseas territories. But I think it's the point that we have to. So let's bring everybody over. 
we'll wait for these tanks to finish and then we're at 92 percent. so i think we just go ham on um probably germany they're a little bit more self they're a little bit more contained than like the united states the united states has got a lot of africa holdings a lot of land mass which is the reason they're big and i don't feel like at this point it's honestly worth going for so i think going for germany is probably our best move and sonaku agrees so that's probably he's my trusted advisor in this game at this point let's grab everybody right here and then we'll just make a big push for germany we're at 99 we could actually win here hold on oh! let's go mongolia for the win <laughs> mongolia invades europe for the win 2.0 part two electric boogaloo oh so stressful so stressful oh my god everybody hated us everybody hated us everybody hated us from like the start my brain hurts <laughs> but as we do start to wrap things up i just want to say thank you guys so much for watching especially you made this fun video if you have made this fun the video hey give it a thumbs up for the upside a lot if you're new around here subscribe for more I put up videos every day and if you have a nation you would like me to play next that's not a landlocked micro nation please put in the comments down below we're taking a break from those for a little bit longer thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in the next one Ooh.